So first and foremost, and of course, most importantly, I just want to stress that I hope Tua Tungavailoa is okay, regardless of how terrible the game was and how bad he played, which we'll get into. We will be critical of his game today, but really none of that matters in comparison to his health. I just want to hope that he's okay, whether his career continues or not, right? Because yeah, this video, this is like my ninth time starting to record this video, and it's just I get so frustrated every time. Just thinking about how, I, and I'm not recording no more. I'm not re-recording no more. This is this is the final take. It's just so frustrating thinking about how I feel right now and thinking how I continue to do this to myself every year. And I mean, watch this damn team. Get invested in this damn team. Why? Because nothing changes, bro. And I've been watching the Dolphins since when? 2011? So what's it been? It's been like 13, 14 years. There's been people that have been watching for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. I can't imagine what they feel like because it's been the same thing since then. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. Going into this game, you knew you had no shot. The Dolphins were two and a half point favorites. BS. Why? How? Y'all know I like to bet on the anonymous player prop betting apps that don't sponsor me, so I'm not saying the name. I put zero bets on the Dolphins today because I had no faith in them. This game played out exactly like we thought. And then even if you want to say, okay, it's one loss in week two, who cares? Well, now the season's over because you got to a, with his concussion again. And the only thing I want to say about that, because obviously I want to stress again, forget the game. Who cares about the game? You want to hope Tua is okay. That is the most important thing. It was nice to hear that he was fully conscious in the locker room. Obviously, he was able to get up and walk off under his own power. His family was there in the locker room to support him. But there's no doubt about it. We saw he was concussed. It looked like he did the little fencing position with the arms raised that we saw. What was that? In the Cincinnati game last year. Uh, and it was scary moments. But the only thing I want to say on that is just I'll say it once. I don't know why he didn't slide in live motion. I could almost, in real time, I was thinking, why aren't you sliding? Why aren't you sliding? Because he had the first down easily. And it, it's just a frustrating position. I don't want to get on Tua anymore for the not sliding because I, I think that's in really poor taste when a guy's sitting here with a potentially career-threatening injury now to get on him for not sliding. I think that's in poor taste. So I'm not going to harp on that anymore. But yeah, man, the, the word retire was trending on Twitter. And I don't disagree. I said the same thing last year, or I guess two years ago, and even after he finished the season fully healthy last year, I still was thinking the same thing. My mind did not change just because, just because he played a full season last year. You never know in this league when your next snap is your last, and when you're a guy like Tua Tungvaloa, who has the, the previous injury history that he does, I, I feel like he was playing with fire. I really, really feel like he does, and that's what we saw tonight. And a lot more of the frustrating stuff with this, the whole weight loss thing, oh my God, that has been so frustrating of an off-season off topic for me because two years ago, they said he bulked up so he would be more resistant to injuries. Well, last year, he was pretty healthy. They said he was doing the jujitsu, so okay, maybe it worked. But now this past off-season, they're saying, oh, he actually lost all that weight to be more mobile. And now we see in week two, he's already hurt. So w which is it? And how can you have a quarterback that his weight plus or minus 10, 15 pounds is that big a difference because they're saying that if he's 15 pounds heavier, he's one of the most immobile quarterbacks in the league. But then if he's 15 pounds lighter, he's one of the most fragile quarterbacks. That's BS. That's not a quarterback you can give a max extension to. What the hell were they thinking? All off season, I said, do not extend the guy. I said, wait and see how the season plays out. There's too many questions to extend him, and they just gave him all that money. What the hell did Tua do to end last season that, that said he deserved that money? I don't understand. Now, of course, now if he does end up retiring or missing time, whatever, I'm glad he's able to set up for his family. He was just married within the last year or two. Obviously, has a new child in, in the same time span. So I'm glad he's able to set himself up. I do feel like Tua gets a lot of undeserved hate because he is such a great person. And people are acting like he's ass. He's not ass. But he's average because he performs against the bad teams and can't do crap against the good ones. 
and to end the second half of last season when they lose to every single good team they play, except for the Cowboys, who ended up being bigger frauds than them. When you're going to Kansas City in the cold, which, by the way, the playoffs take place at the same time every year, which is always in the cold. So unless you're playing a home game to a tongue of a lower, you're going to suck in every playoff game. But no, let's give that guy the money. Going to the postseason, they score one touchdown, and it was because Tyreek Hill made a hell of a play. It was a terrible pass by Tua. So what the hell did they see from Tua in the last in last year to say he deserves that extension? I don't get it. And then you come into tonight, he had three picks. And it's the same thing with the Tua stands. He always has an excuse. First pick, oh, the ball should have looked around. His eyes weren't on the ball. Second one, oh, uh, Robbie Chosen ran the wrong route. Oh, third one, Teron Armstead was out the game. Kendall Lamb uh, gave up some pressure. So Tua couldn't throw the ball out of bounds. Which, individually, all of those could be legitimate excuses. Except for that last one. How the hell Tua couldn't throw the ball out of bounds? I don't know. Ended up being a pick six. But individually, if you want to say those are legitimate excuses, fine. But it's every year, every game against a good team, there's always an excuse with this guy. And at some point, it has to stop being an excuse. And it's just who he is at this point. Is it a coincidence? That last week, he plays pretty well. He leads the league in passing. This week, they play a good team on primetime, and he has three picks. Oh, but none of them are his fault. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. And yeah, last game, ran for a first down, ran for a couple first downs today. Lost that weight, he's more mobile. Is he? Because he may be able to run a little bit more, but he has zero pocket presence. Took a bad sack last week. Took a bad sack this week on fourth down. Stepping up right into the pressure. He has zero pocket presence. I don't give a damn if you could run. Because if you got zero pocket presence, it doesn't matter. I, I don't understand. I really hate to get on the guy Tua today after his, it was truly a devastating injury and a devastating game all over Twitter. People that covered the team for decades now. Ethan Skolnick saying it's the most depressing game they ever saw. So I, I don't think I'm over-exaggerating here when I, when I say how just depressing a loss this was and I hate to harp on Tua because of the injury and he seems like such a great guy he really does and I'm praying that he's okay whether he continues his football career or not either way I'll be okay for his sake I hope he does retire but I can understand why he doesn't want to because football's his life you know everyone's saying oh it's not hard to just retire I feel like that's a lot easier said than done. And I can't imagine the kind of difficult spot that two is in mentally. So I truly do feel for him. Uh, there was a lot of talk about that guardian cap, which is sort of that soft uh, cover that some players are wearing now that, you know, they say can help protect against concussions. Why two is not wearing it? I don't know. Why every player in the league isn't wearing it? I don't know. You see, most players are. I, I think there's only a couple, but... Uh, yeah, he should be wearing it. This game sucks. This game is devastating, and, and I shouldn't be mad because I do it to myself. I don't have to watch these games. I, I know it forces me to do it, but yet sit, I, here I sit in a, and I watch these games. First big game of the season against a big team. Same things, throw, throw three picks, and I, I can't even fake myself into being hopeful next week because two is likely missing an, an extended period of time, and Skylar Thompson sucks too, by the way. I don't know. They, they can't find anyone better than him. He's terrible. They, they let Mike White go because he was terrible. Skyler Thompson don't look like he's much worse. This is going to end up with us getting Ryan Tannehill again, which, good God, Miami Dolphins football, ladies and gentlemen. Time is a f damn flat circle. Uh, anyways, nothing about the game, man. I mean, what was it? Two-possession game going into the third quarter. They had a chance. They, they really did, even though it looked like they were getting the doors blown on, off them. Uh, but then that's exactly what ended up happening. Only lost by 21. But obviously, this game was was never, never, never within reach. Uh, once again, I think the Buffalo Bills beat us like eight out of the last 10 times. Uh, and they showed it was like a 14 and a half point differential every game. They kick our ass. They're our daddies. And I'm going to sit here and admit it. I'm not going to run from the smoke. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to lie to you. They own us. Uh, and I have zero faith that the Dolphins beating them any anytime soon, at least this season. Uh, I really do. But, I mean, uh, we could talk about the rest of this game. We'll go through the box score here a little bit. Uh, Devon A. Chan was really the one bright spot. Uh, the kid continues to be a stud. Obviously, he had no moster today. A. Chan was questionable as well. He did play, had uh, 96 yards on 22 carries. Very heavy workload for him today. And got seven catches for 69 nice yards. Uh, and he had a touchdown reception as well. So uh, they said they were going to use him as a receiver. We've seen it through two weeks. He's a very dynamic 
weapon in that regard. It's nice to have. Doesn't matter. Uh, you don't got much else. Uh, your two big receivers today basically got you nothing. Uh, I think Jalen Waddle got you like, what, 40 yards on four catches. Tyree Kill only had three catches, 24 yards. He consistently plays terrible versus the Buffalo Bills, too. Uh, I did smash his under today on the, the anonymous player prop betting app. So, you know, whatever. That was nice. I mean, it's like the, you can make some money on this Dolphins team, at least, right? You can do that because it's the same damn story uh, every single time. But uh, who else do we got here? Anyone else I really care about? I don't know. Jalen Wright got some snaps today. His second carry had like a nice 10-yard game. Nope, never mind. Bring it back, holding on to Ron Armstead. Uh, uh, several uh, false start penalties today. Julian Hill dropping touchdowns left and right. That guy sucks. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, what's his name? Jalen Ramsey. Oh, let's give Jalen Ramsey the extension. Let's play him week one and week two when he's not healthy. He's been terrible in both games thus far as well. Uh, gave up a touchdown today on like a monster third and long for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, was very bad in week one also. If he's not healthy, sit him. If he is healthy, he sucks. Uh, and he's a fat cat because he got paid and he can't perform. Uh, just like pretty much every other person they, they paid on this team. Uh, really just a, a an absolutely atrocious performance from the Miami Dolphins and Mike McDaniel. Terrible uh, uh, drive to end the half there where it looked like they were playing for a field goal, which is just ridiculous. I don't know what the hell happened to Mike McDaniel. Week one and week two now, everything is dink and dunks. They barely go in the middle of the field. They're barely going downhill. You saw in week one versus the Jags when they finally went downhill. That's when they started to get some drives going. But no, same thing today, dink and dunk. Let's throw it behind the line of scrimmage to Devon A. Chan. Let's throw it to behind the line of scrimmage to Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill. I like getting the ball in your playmaker's hands. But when you're playing a, a defense, you got to spread them out. Have those guys go downfield, attack a couple times, and they almost never did that tonight. Uh, and it was very, very frustrating there. Uh, just these, this terrible play calling. I don't know what the hell happened to Mike McDaniel. Uh, is there anything else I want to talk about from this game? Probably, but I can't think of it at the time. I, I don't know. Uh, Jordan Poyer got a targeting call. I thought he might show up against his former team. Nope, that didn't happen. Uh, what else was there? I don't know. There was something else I wanted to say, but uh, I can't remember. I'm sure it'll it'll come to me later. But anyways, uh, thank y'all for staying for this this rant here. I uh, really debated making this video or not because I wasn't in the mood. But sometimes uh, other Dolphins fans like to come and watch these videos after bad games and just listen to me rant and we can all sort of console each other together. Uh, so let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, if you're as frustrated as me, I'll be, you know, let me know. Uh, we, we're in this together. If you think I'm overreacting, feel free to let me know as well. Maybe we'll get another video out in the next couple days when we learn the status of Tua Tagovailoa's health. Uh, but other than that, I'll see y'all for the next video. Uh, Peace out, y'all. Pull up in the city trying to get that dead fast. Like, do it on my own. I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill him off. Yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.